Hi there. Thank you for joining me for this 11th session of the Medical Assessment of Impairment. My name is Roger Pillema and I'm an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. The topic today is testing veracity and I imagine that all doctors working in a medical legal setting, testing for veracity is something we all do all the time, either consciously or subconsciously. In studies regarding patients unconsciously or consciously misrepresenting their symptoms, figures as high as 60% are suggested and there are numerous articles on the subject. Malingering dates back many centuries and anthropologists have even noted feigning behaviours for perceived advantage in chimpanzees. A textbook entitled Malingering or Simulation of Disease was published in 1917, 100 years ago. The most well-known article on non-organic science was published by Waddell et al. in 1980 and well worth reading. We are all aware of Waddell's science. One of the important misconceptions is that Waddell's signs were intended to detect malingering, which is not the case. But we all use these signs, as well as our own personal signs, in testing veracity. I imagine that what we do is have a little column in our minds where we put a little cross whenever we come across something that doesn't quite fit, such as increased range of cervical rotation or shoulder movement on informal or indirect examination compared to formal examination or even more subtle signs. In part two of this talk, I would like to take the opposite tack, that is, discuss the other column in our minds where we give little ticks for signs of genuine behavior, once again, either consciously or subconsciously. For this talk, however, I would like to concentrate on one particular sign in Riddell's paper, which is entitled, Non-Organic Physical Signs in Low Back Pain. The paper was published in Volume 5, Number 2 of Spine in March-April 1980, for which he received the Volvo Award in Clinical Science. The sign or test that I would like to discuss is termed the Distraction Test. Under Distraction, Waddell states, and I quote, A positive physical finding is demonstrated in the routine manner. This finding is then checked when the patient's attention is distracted. Any finding that is consistently present is likely to be physically based. Findings that are present only on formal examination and disappear at other times may have a non-organic component. The only example that is then given under the heading distraction test is the straight leg raising test. Once again, I quote, straight leg raising is the most useful distraction test. The patients whose back pain has a non-organic component shows marked improvement in straight leg raising on distraction as compared to formal testing with the patient's supine. The reader is then referred to figure four, showing the patient in a seated position with hip flexed to 90 degrees and knee extended with a caption, straight leg raising improving with distraction as when testing the plantar reflex in the sitting position. This finding is regularly quoted in medical legal reports as being a non-organic sign and I've never read or heard of this being questioned. And yet I almost routinely find this to be the case, even in the most genuine of patients. And I cannot imagine that others have not found this as well. This occurs in patients with ridiculous signs with reduced straight leg raising, as well as those with tight hamstrings. I will suggest two hypotheses as to how this may occur. Please note, however, this discussion does not apply to patients who are malingering or have acute spinal conditions where any movements may be painful. The following videos are examples of patients with very genuine radiculopathy, as evidenced by their clinical signs, who show significant restriction of straight leg raising in the recumbent position, but who show marked improvement in straight leg raising in the sitting position. The first video shows a 30-year-old male who injured his back in November 2014 with referred pain into his right foot and who had surgery in July 2015. He was seen in January 2017 with the following positive clinical signs. Straight leg raising to 30 degrees on the right, absent ankle reflex and decreased sensation in the S1 distribution. When he sits with his legs over the end of the examining couch, a far greater range of straight leg raising is possible. Please note that it is most important that when sitting, the patient is instructed to hold on to the edge of the examining couch to avoid extension of the spine when the leg is straightened. 
Okay, Jimmy, just relax. I'm going to lift this leg up. Tell me if it worries you at all. That's fine. No problem at all. Okay, now I'm going to lift this leg up. Tell me when it starts to worry you. It's starting. Where do you feel it? The whole leg. Going how far down? Uh, the whole way, but the majority is in the knee. Is it going to the foot? Yes. If I go a little bit higher? Yes. Yeah, really so Okay. Come down. Just relax for me. Okay. Relax this one. Relax now. Bend this one up. Just relax. Uh, this side, do you feel? Yes. Tell me when it changes, mate. Now. Tell me when it becomes sharp again. Now. Tell me when it changes. I can feel that. Yeah. No, I can't feel that. Can't feel that. Okay. Now, give me your hands. Hold on to the edges. Tell me if this worries you at all. No. Tell me when this one starts to worry you. Now. Where do you feel it? The whole leg. The whole leg. Okay, terrific, Jimmy. The second case is a 52-year-old shop assistant who developed low back and left leg pain going into the lateral board of her foot following a fall onto her buttocks. She had had two surgical procedures at the L5-S1 level, this last being a decompression and fusion. The positive findings at the time of examination in February 2017 were decreased straight leg raising to less than 30 degrees on the left, decreased sensation in the S1 distribution, weak eversion of her left foot. Once again, it is important to stabilize the spine to avoid extension. And note the increased straight leg raising once again in the sitting position. Tell me when it starts to worry you. Okay, it's already worrying. Where do you feel it? Right, right the way down. Just gonna check the feeling. Is this sharp here? Yeah. Tell me when it changes, Kylie. It's changed. It's Tell me when it comes sharp again. Yeah. On this side, turn your foot out against my hand. Push hard, hard, hard. Now let's do it on this side. Turn it out. Push hard, hard, hard. Try again. No. Okay. On this side, let me straighten it out. Tell me if it worries you. Not yeah. too bad. No, 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 no. Tell me on this side when it starts to worry. Already. Where do you feel? Tell me, where does right. it go? Right down yeah. the yeah. Okay, okay, okay. This next case is a 30-year-old uh, security officer who injured his low back in August 2011, unloading heavy bags of coin. He had developed an S1 nerve root lesion on the left, but had declined surgery. When examined in February 2017, he had the following positive clinical signs straight leg raising to less than 30 degrees on the left, decreased sensation in the S1 distribution, weak eversion of the left foot. Once again, note the increased straight leg raising in the sitting position. Tell me when it starts to worry you. Oh, okay. Tell me on this side, just relax. Tell me when it starts to worry you. Be yeah. sore, huh? Sorry. Okay, come down. I want you to tell me when it goes from sharp to not sharp. Okay. Feel this one? It's sharp. Tell me when it changes. It's sharp. As it changes. Tell me when it comes sharp again, David. It's sharp. On this side, David, turn your foot in. Push, 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 push. Turn it out. Push, push, push. This one, turn it in. Push, push, push. Turn it out. Out. Push, push, push. Not so strong. Okay. Tell me if it worries you at all. Oh. Yeah, in the back, huh? Mm -hmm. Just relax, David. Bend this one, let it go straight. That worries you? Yeah. Where do you feel it? From here. The next patient is a 42-year-old postal delivery lady whom I showed in the last talk on extensor digitorum brevis wasting, who came off her motorcycle in January 2015 and sustained an L5 nerve root lesion on the right. When seen in February 2017, she had the following positive clinical signs. 
straight leg raising to 30 degrees on the right, decreased sensation in the L5 distribution, weak extensor hallucis longus, as well as wasting of the extensor digitorum brevis. Note the increased straight leg raising in the sitting position. Michelle, let me lift this one up. Straight. Tell me if it worries you or not. Not that. Come down. Now I'm going to lift this one. Tell me if it starts to worry you. Mm -hmm. Already there? Yeah. Where do you feel it? Where do you feel it? Back, anything yeah, down the lever top? Yeah, a little bit near where your fingers are. Yeah, fingers are. Okay, come down. Okay, now what I want you to do, pull your big toes up towards you, yeah. hard as you can. Keep yeah. pulling hard as you can. Pull, 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 pull. Yeah. Okay, relax. Now, can you feel the pin trick this side? Yes. Sharp, there? Yes. There? Yeah. Okay, tell me, this is sharp, tell me when it changes, Michelle. Now? Tell me when it comes sharp again. Now. Tell me when it changes. Now. Tell me when it comes sharp again. Now. Tell me when it changes. Now. Tell me when it comes sharp again. Now. Okay, terrific. Give me this foot. Put it up here. Now, what I want you to do, pull your toes up as hard as you can. Okay. Up, okay? Pull up, pull up, pull up, hard as you can. Terrific. Okay, let's go the other side. Please. Hard as you can, hard as you can, hard as you can, hard as you can. Okay. The final patient is a 63-year-old sheet metal worker who developed disc lesions following heavy lifting in 1989 and had come to a two-level decompression infusion. When seen in 2017 of March, he had the following positive clinical signs. Straight leg raising to 20 degrees on the right, absent ankle reflex, decreased sensation in the S1 distribution and weak eversion of the right foot. Note the increased straight leg raising when seated. Yep. Okay, Walter, I'm going to lift this one. Tell me when it starts to worry you, man. Worry me. Where, yeah. do you, where do you feel it? Down the, down, down the leg on the outside of the calf. Out, calf, out to here. Yep, the mid calf. Yeah, mid calf. Down. Mid calf, okay. I'm going to lift this one. Tell me when it starts to worry Now, where do you feel it? Down the outside of the leg is burning because it has been burning all day and down, down to the toe. And does it make it a bit worse? Yes, it does. Okay, just relax. I'm now going to test your reflexes. Bend this one up, Walter. And this one way, up you go. Okay, I'm now going to check the feeling. I want you to tell me when it goes from sharp to not sharp, Walter. Sharp is there. Tell me when it changes. Dull, Dull. Tell me when it comes back sharp again. Right? Getting sharp now. Once more. Tell me when it goes a bit dull. Numb. Uh, numb now. Numb now. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Getting sharp now. Okay. Now on this side, I want you to turn your foot out like that. Push hard. Push, push, push. On this side, turn your foot out that way. Push, push, push. Not so strong. Last thing I want you to just sit up, mate. Put your feet over the side. Take your time. Take your time. Now, I want you to do your hands. Hold on both sides like that. Now, I'm going to lift this leg. Tell me when it starts to worry you, if it does. It's not too bad now. It's, 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 okay, tell me when this one starts to worry you. Around about now. About now. Yeah. Okay. So, what is the possible mechanism for this? An analogy might be to consider a patient with an osteoarthritic hip where only 10 degrees of abduction on the affected right side is possible. On examination, however, one can actually get 30 degrees of abduction on testing unless the pelvis is anchored. And this is done by fully abducting the normal hip as shown in the following slides. This shows a man with 10 degrees of abduction on the right side. However, unless the pelvis is stabilised, he is able to abduct to, say, 30 degrees by simply tilting his pelvis. Only when the pelvis is stabilised by abducting the normal hip maximally is the true amount of abduction shown on the right. What I suggest is happening in cases with radiculopathy is that with the patient lying flat on the examining couch, 
I picture the lumbar sacral plexus being held in a relatively fixed position with both hips extended, which would tend to anchor the lumbar sacral plexus on both sides. When the hip and knee are flexed, some of the tension is removed on both sides, thereby allowing increased straight leg raising on the affected side. With regard to the restricted straight leg raising in patients with tight hamstrings, in the recumbent position, the lumbar spine is in lordosis, whereas in the seated position, the spine is able to assume a flexed position. In lordosis of the lumbar spine, the pelvis tilts backwards, as does the origin of the hamstrings, thereby stretching and tightening the muscle. Whereas in the flexed position, the pelvis tilts forwards, thereby relaxing the tension in the hamstrings and allowing an increased straight leg raising. This is readily tested on oneself. Sit on the edge of the chair, put your heel to the ground, fix your knee in extension, put your lumbar spine in maximal extension, lordosis, and test your straight leg raising. Now let your spine flex and see how much your straight leg raising increases. Let's do it again. Sit on the edge of the chair, heel on the ground, fix the knee in hyperextension, lumbar spine in lordosis, maximal lordosis, test your straight leg raising, allow the spine to flex, note the increased straight leg raising. I see this so regularly that I cannot imagine that others have not found the same thing. Possibly then we are simply passing on information from authority. Certainly something to think about. Thank you for your attention and I hope that you will join me for the second part of this talk. Until then, Salani Gashni.